And I was like, hello boys and girls, today I'm going to do something I've only done once before, which is a cookery video. So I'm going to make some soup. So you'll have to excuse my cack-handedness of camera action. There you go. So I've got celery, some chorizo, some carrots, some chestnuts, some chilies. Oh, there's the pan I'm going to be using. So first of all, you need to turn the pan on, obviously. That's me demonstrating that nicely. And you need it on gas mark four. Oh, camera professional pointing at the pan for no reason. So then you need to get some olive oil. I've got the cheap stuff from Asda. Other brands are available. Then you need to cut your carrot up, smaller than I did, I learned to my um, detriment. Then you need to cut some evil celery, which is the most disgusting product in the world. Then you need to chop up an onion. I speeded it up, obviously, because you don't really need to see me cutting onion for five minutes. And I think I'll go even faster. And then you need chorizo, chorizo, whatever you call it. Pop them all in the pan. Ooh, did I show you the bit with the olive oil in? I did. Put the olive oil in first, obviously. Give it a bit of stir, and then you need to simmer it for 20 minutes, I think. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I think it was 20 minutes. Oh, more professional camera work there. Such a pro. There we go, thumbs up. Then you need some saffron, which is literally the most expensive thing they sell in scenes. Because this, see this pot here? See, when I eventually open the lid, you'll see there's a little vial inside which has got the saffron in. See how tiny the little vial of it is? This teeny little vial costs more than a week's shopping. Anyway, not to worry. Being a um, celebrity chef, you've got to do these things. Oh, here I go again, chopping up uh, chilli, I think that was. There's some garlic there as well, but I missed video in it. So here's the secret ingredients, which are chestnuts. Did you know chestnuts have maggots in them? If you ever buy them raw, you should cut them open in half and check the maggots inside, because they do contain maggots, which we found out first hand. But unfortunately, these were already cooked. So we couldn't test for maggots, but not to worry. So you need to mash them up. Probably not with a potato masher, but I didn't really have any other tool handy. So I had to go with a potato masher. Didn't have much of a success, so I used the knife as well, which was even more of a failure. So then I resulted in popping them in the blender. Now, top tip, don't blend them this much. That's turned into breadcrumbs, that's far too blended. So I'll pop them in a dish. Nice professional shot of my head. Oh, is my hair going thin there? I thought my hair was thick as, thick as could be. So anyway, excuse the blurriness, my nose, so there we go, there we go, shouldn't be that trimmed, should be a bit more thingy than that, a bit more thick, and they just chuck all the rubbish down the sink, obviously if you haven't got a waste disposal, don't stick it down the sink. Now then, what am I doing next? I'm adding the chilli, the cumin, the garlic, and that green stuff, which I forget what it is, but I'll try and remember what it is later on. Stick that in the pan, stir it up, give it a scoot around, top tip. Don't turn it up too hot. And then you need to add in some tomatoes. Tomatoes to our English people. Oops, that was the first pan. You might notice I've changed pans now to a grey one because I kind of destroyed the other one, but what can I do? It's in the dishwasher now, hopefully it'll all come off. If not, Stephen can sort it out for us. Now back to this expensive saffron. You need to count out 20 strands. Apparently saffron's a bit of a flower, is that right? So you need to put 20 strands in a dish. And then you need to stick some hot water on it to make it look like pea. Looks like pea stroke Red Bull, or maybe a pea after you drank lots of Red Bull. Then you need to get the cumin, pardon the pun. Um, and you need a little sprinkle of that. Then you need some more of that green stuff, which I can't remember what it was. I think this might be teeny bit out of sync, because I think I've already added these to the pan already, but what the heck. I'll try and think of what that green stuff is. So once it's festering away, being bubbled for 20 minutes, you add your dusty. That shouldn't be dusty. Um, what are those called again? Chestnuts, not to be confused with conkers. Stick them in the pan, mix them together. You get this kind of doughy mixture. And at this point I thought I'd done something wrong because I forgot that was the next stage where you've got to add some water over there's the, the amber nectar. Let's slow this down just to get the most out of my money. So there we go, we've added that. That's the saffron with water. I think you put three tablespoons of water in with it. And then, as I say, it was going a bit dodgy. It wasn't really very liquidy. And I looked at the instructions. And you had to add some water. So it said add a litre. So the only thing I had to measure a litre with that was clean was the jug off the blender. Now, does this look like a litre to you? Oops. When my friend Catherine made it, it didn't look like this. But it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Oops. Stir that up a bit faster. It says simmer it for 10 minutes. I don't know if this is simmering or boiling, but Stephen said it was far too hot. 
And there you have it, the final product. I don't know why it looks a totally different colour. I hope you don't think this is a tin soup. So I bought some bread. Oh, there's me. Bought some bread and there we go. Hope you enjoy that. Toodaloo.